think so. Oh, maybe it is. Well, looky there. So we did, we did get it working. Hmm. Right. Well, hello, folks. I have been toiling away at figuring out how to stream here live for about an hour and been pulling my hair out. And it looks like we finally solved it. Uh, I believe I should be live on LinkedIn as well as YouTube. If that's the case, if you're seeing this, please drop a comment down below. I have not announced this in any way. So this is just a random live stream. And uh, what we're going to be doing is actually, we're going to be muting this. Actually, we're going to get rid of the uh, LinkedIn page. Let's see, pause that. I wonder what it does if I join my own live stream. All right, so we'll get rid of that. I, th I think the way LinkedIn works is the only way I can see comments. Hey, this is test way I can see comments is if I actually go into the LinkedIn page, which is quite obnoxious, but you know what kind of fits into the motif that LinkedIn is going for. Oh, looky there. So I did get that chat over in my restream software or in my OBS software rather. Let's test the chat in YouTube. And let's see if that comes through or not. Hey, it sure did. All right. So testing the responses from Restream. And I believe the way this will work is that it will send it to YouTube. And yes, there it is from YouTube. Booyah. Uh, but I don't think that it will send it to LinkedIn. And it looks like that's the case. Okay. So I will see people on LinkedIn in my software and be able to respond over here, but I won't be able to, or I'll, I'll be able to see what they say, but I won't be able to actually respond. All right, enough of that. Let's go over to the spreadsheets. If anybody's here, this is why you got here. So what happened was I've created a couple different YouTube video tutorials on dynamic search bars. In Google Sheets specifically, most of this you can do in Excel also. Um, I am in sheets most often though, so that's what I made this about. So in one of these, and I'll show you both sheets here in just a moment, but in one of them, I had a viewer ask earlier today, or I guess this was this weekend, hey, can we actually do multiple criteria in the search bar or have different search bars to filter the query outcome? Uh, and yes, you can do that. So I actually am just doing a test live screen here live scream. No, we won't be screaming. Uh, test live stream uh, right now to do exactly that. So here is one of the search bar sheets. This is the better dynamic search bar sheet. This is actually my favorite way to do it because it's a little bit cleaner. Uh, I'm using sort, filter, search, indirect. Got a little search bar up here. I'm searching. I'm even having a drop down list where you can search the category. But the question actually came to me from this original sheet which pardon the mess because it is a little messy. It's about a year ago where I created this and I've really Frankensteined it <laughs> since then. I've added a lot of stuff to it. A lot of tabs, a lot of sheets down at the bottom from other people who've asked many questions about this. Uh, what's happening though, is we've got this big search bar right here. And I'll change the search term and you see stuff happening down below. I'm using two different things in columns A through F. I'm using query. So this is uh, unique to Google Sheets where you can use a SQL-like querying language and query named ranges or otherwise specified ranges inside of a Google Sheet. And it's not as powerful as SQL, but it does the basic stuff and it does it pretty well in my opinion. So here I'm selecting A, B, C, D, E, and those are the columns from over here on this actual master data sheet, selecting those where they contain certain criteria. Um, and here's the uh, full query statement. But today, what we want, let me go over here to my new sheet. I haven't even named it properly yet. What we want to do today 
is have two search bars. Um, and, and I've kind of Frankenstein, Frankensteined this according to the comment made. Uh, this must be a realtor who's asking the question about different search bars. They've got condos, uh, rental listings, and they want to search by condo name as well as filter by the number of bedrooms. And I'm sure they've got a ton of other information on their sheet, on their data set, but we're just gonna use these two columns and that's it to go through how you would do this. And the way that I've got it set up, I've just got you know fake data, obviously, condos one through four, number of bedrooms one through four, and then in columns E through F, I've got just a mismatched uh, list of different combinations here. Totally random. It's uh, just for the sake of building something that works. And as you can see over here with search condo, I can change this and it changes to all the condo twos. And then I can change the bedrooms and it's still got condo two, but then it's switched to the bedrooms that contain bedroom one. Let me close the door because the kids just came downstairs and you can probably hear them in the background. All right, and this won't take too long to go through. And it's quite nifty uh, because what we do is we basically nest query statements. And this is not the only way that you can do this. Comment below or on LinkedIn, wherever you are. Anybody on LinkedIn? No, I didn't think so. It's a test test stream, but hey, comment below if you've got a better way to do this and uh, love to take a look at that. But what I'm going to do is just continue the theme of using query because we're in Google Sheets and we can do that and I've already built it. So I'm going to walk through it and we're going to nest two query statements together. All right. This looks messy, but let me make it a little bit cleaner for you by doing a couple things here and then talking about it. Okay, we've got two query statements. The first one right here, it's looking at I3. This is searching the number of beds, or the number of bedrooms in our list. So it's looking at if I3 is blank, well, we're just gonna return an empty string because we haven't specified a search value. That's optional, but I like it because it makes it cleaner if nothing's listed there. And I'll prove it works by just deleting that. Okay, it's blank. Uh, if it is not blank though, then we're gonna use our query statement. And what we're doing is we're querying this named range and I've named the range. You can see it highlighted in the purple dashed line over here in columns E and F through row 51. We're querying that named range condos and we're selecting call one and call two. So that's column one and call two where column two contains this search term. And so this is just one of the keywords that we can use in this querying language. Uh, I, Google may even call it Google Query. I don't, I don't know. It's some, something, something fancy, but it's like SQL. If you're familiar with SQL, it, it functions the same way. It just doesn't have as much. Uh, the features are not as rich. So we're selecting those columns if they contain, if column two contains one bedroom. And you can see if I change this to two, then we've got all the condos in column one, but only the ones where it's two bedrooms. And if I change it to three, same thing there. Okay, well, we're doing likewise the same deal over here, only we're searching that same named range. We're, we're displaying or selecting columns one and two, where lower call one, so now we are lower casing this search term right here. And if I put condo, I'll prove that that's the case. Or if I put CO, I mean, it's going to return everything, right? And you can see in column N and O, it's returned everything because everything is going to include CO because we've got condo written in every single row of column E. Um, so we're doing lowercase column one contains I2. And this allows us to write in call condo one and now it just returns condo ones with any number of bedrooms, right? And you know what, let's put this right here just so we can make this a little bit the same. Uh, now we've got condo one, I can change this to two. And as you saw at the beginning, all I really have to do is put the number in there because it's just gonna return any condo that's got that number in it. If these were actually named, you know, if this were 
condo complexes or whatever, we could use the actual names. But for my example, they all have numbers in them. Okay, so the magic happens, or the nesting rather, is when you just cut out this query statement, right? And then we put it over here instead of querying the condos range, we need to query the resultant range of our other query statement. So we want to query this junk right here. And in order to do that, we just replace condos with that whole other query statement. So now it's going to take all the condo fours with three bedrooms. And uh, if you change these numbers, as I showed you in the beginning, it changes everything accordingly. So I thought that was neat. I always enjoy uh, nesting stuff together, simplifying some more complex things uh, here in Google Sheets. Specifically, uh, like I said, you can do it in Excel as well, although you wouldn't be able to use this same technique with Query because Query is actually one of those unique to Google Sheets. Excel's got a bunch more firepower under the hood uh, in many other respects, but this is this is one of those unique instances where Google Sheets can do something in a way unique uh, to itself. Hope that was helpful for you. And click like and subscribe uh, to the YouTube channel. That's where I do most of this stuff is over here on YouTube. Um, yeah, Eamon Cottrell. Sheets, Excel, App Script, Automations. And you know what? There's also like reviews of courses. I go through a bunch of stuff on the channel. I get this new Google Vids video. Did a little marathon trainer with uh, some Claude AI. I do a little bit of uh, several things, but the primary focus is on coding and spreadsheets. So if that interests you, if you want to get good at spreadsheets, come check it out. Got Sheet. Dot XYZ will also take you to my free newsletter. I'll leave all that stuff linked in the description below. Here's uh, here's that fine little newsletter here with some nice folks who've really enjoyed what I've had to say. And that's it, folks. Have a great afternoon and 